Now, the Google Quantum AI campus in California gives us a glimpse into the future. It houses the kind of quantum computers that can perform a calculation in 200 seconds that the team measured would take 10,000 years on a classical supercomputer. The aim is to give us a tool that can do entirely new kinds of computation to serve humanity. Here's its engineer, Eric Lucero, to give us an exclusive tour of the lab. Hi everyone, my name is Eric Lucero. I'm pleased to have you here at the Quantum AI campus. I'm gonna walk you around, show you a bit about not only the history of how we got here, show you a little bit more about the space and the lab and where we're headed. So I'd love to start with our Sycamore quantum processors. Behind this piece of metal right here, on this circuit board and all these connectors that we have is the actual quantum processor. This system gets mounted into our cryostat and that system we're gonna see in full scale just a moment inside the lab. So it's also a pleasure to have you here for all the reasons we can show some of the collaborations that we've had from our nine qubit systems that have now scaled up to say beyond 54. Here's a nice example of one of our systems that we had that was 22 qubits. And it's really cool because all these will be put together in the lab that you're about to see. So I'm gonna take you there, so come with me. Now I'm gonna show you where we take those Sycamore processors that I showed you earlier and install them into the cryostat. So we're gonna walk over to one of my favorite systems here. This little cryostat, is what we use to cool those systems down to really a couple orders of magnitude colder than space. Basically, each one of these metal stages that you see here, from this edge all the way down, kind of in this layer cake, the very bottom of that is what we call the mixing chamber. At that point there is where we mount the quantum processor, that sycamore system that I showed you earlier, and it thermalizes to that plate. That plate gets to 10 millikelvin. That's really cold. That's some of the coldest places in the universe. That's two orders of magnitude colder than like between two galaxies. All of that system runs all the way up the top where we have wires that come out. You can see over here on our control system, those are custom control electronics that our team, engineers here at Google, have done and designed specifically to control the quantum processor inside. I like to think of them as a music player, playing music to the qubits. There's some analog pulses that come down and that musical score gets played through those wires all the way down to those qubits. There's a lot of different skill sets all over the world that these people are coming from to join the team and think about what is a quantum computer actually gonna serve everyone and how do we do that responsibly for the world and make this uh, a tool for humanity. All right, so now I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about what this space is gonna look like as we scale in the future. Today, we are here right now at this point where we've just gotten past the Beyond Classical experiment and we're headed towards these next milestones to build an error-corrected logical qubit, and finally, to an error-corrected quantum computer. Now this space will grow, and we've really designed it to be the kind of place where we can land a number of these milestones along the way. Each one of these cryostats are systems that our team has spent many, many hours in design and customizations to make these some of the most powerful quantum computers in the world. We can do the impossible. And we look at quantum computing, it's something that we look at as maybe it's a 10-year investment, at the other end of that will be this tool for humanity. And I think it's an important part of that style of creativity that is not just a, a scientist creativity or just an artist, it's actually kind of that combination of both that gives us the ability to be inventing the future. So it's been a pleasure to share with you all this space. I can't wait to show it to you in person and to see this place come together for an error-corrected logical qubit. Until then, take care, I'll see you all later. And Eric, our very own Q from the Quantum Lab, joins us live. Hi, Eric. How are you doing? Great Good to be Good to here. see you. Now, this sounds like a kind of computer that will usher in developments that we only dreamed were possibilities. Yes, I, I, would, I would agree with you. And I'd also say that it's the, the kind of thing that uh, I get excited about is it's the developments that we maybe even haven't dreamt of yet. I mean, as a, as a new tool uh, begets new ideas, right? So it's not just that these quantum computers are, are faster at like particular problems, it's that they're fundamentally computing in a whole new way. Um, and it's closer to how nature works. It's, it's actually tapping into the world of quantum mechanics. And how does 
a quantum computer work and how is it different from classical computing? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. Um, in classical computing, uh, we can we have the fundamental building blocks are bits, and these can uh, be either zero or one, like a switch. So zero or one. Uh, in quantum computing, uh, we use the these quantum bits, uh, or qubits for short. Qubits can be in a superposition of states, so they can be either uh, they're actually a combination of zero and one at the same time. So say anywhere on this sphere, uh, zero is uh, the pointing up, one is pointing down, I could be in a superposition of states. Um, and this superposition, it invites us into, I'd say, a richer computational space where we can perform more complex computations. So what kind of computations are we talking about? Like, so for what? Yeah, right, that's a, that's a great question. Um, well, let me start with in, in emphasizing that nature, fundamentally, the physical world is quantum mechanical. So if we want to predict, uh, say, molecules or like, say, some amazing new materials, um, we can actually use a quantum computer because it's actually mapping to how Mother Nature works, right? It's fundamentally working like, a, like, like with the quantum mechanics underneath. So, for example, these new materials may be uh, lighter batteries, more efficient batteries, um, lower ways of reducing uh, the carbon output from, say, making fertilizer to feed the world. So these are all ways that we can model the mother nature much better when we use the quantum computer that we're building here at Google. So nature seems to be incredibly complex, but is the idea that you actually string together lots of qubits and that allows you to do these incredibly complex computations? <laughs> uh, yes, uh, but it's not just quite that easy. Um, what we actually need to do um, is that first we have to show that we can, you know, show that quantum error correction works, right? So uh, then we will scale up the number of physical qubits. So ultimately we wanna show that we can create what's called a logical qubit. We create that by basically stringing together a, a fabric of these physical qubits with enough, I'd say exquisite control of those systems so that we can actually show that this error correction works. Um, and then once we've shown that, we can then scale up all these logical qubits to create a full error-corrected quantum computer. It's fascinating stuff. What made you want to become an inventor? Wow. I would say that it was uh, at the very beginning of my life being able to, to work on projects with my hands. Uh, I remember my father getting me up early in the mornings to even do uh, you know, big projects around the house. Um, and then I think mentor after mentor um, had a, a really amazing mentor in college uh, who brought me into the lab and we started to actually make uh, experiments for the cryogenic dark matter search, which then led to uh, my introduction to quantum computing. Um, and ever since I've been able to like actually bring things into existence from the atom scale all the way up to a building and campus scale. It's something I love to do is invent the future. Well, it's amazing to meet you, Eric. Thank you so much for explaining something that's so complex and keep up the extraordinary work. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.